What's up everybody, it's the RC Yeoman here. Today I'm going to show you how I made a working tic-tac-toe board using Circuits V1. Now this is to help people who are kind of new to circuits and want to learn how to use it. Also, if you stick around to the end of the video, I will show you where on the Invention Store you can go to just get this if you want to add it to your rooms so people can play tic-tac-toe. Let's just go ahead and get started. So first of all, we should make a room. Ah yes, the beach, we're here. So I like this room just because of the ambiance, you know what I mean? You can imagine that you're in the beach. Okay, so the first thing that we really need to do and concentrate on is making all of the assets, I guess you would call it, which would be the tic-tac-toe board and the tic-tac-toe pieces. Let's start with the board. I think that looks okay. Might need a little bit more space later. But we'll come to that when we get to that. And then now we need to make the X's and the O's. So let's create, uh, for the O's we can use a tube and we're just gonna go, I'm actually gonna do it down here. Turn, snap off, and let's make it red. Just to give it some, some contrast. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is hold down and spin. And that should give us the perfect little circle. There we go. So now we've got one. Oh, now if, if, if you're making these, there's a max, the maximum possible number of these that could be used in a game of tic-tac-toe is five. Because imagine this, you have O, X, O, X, O, X, O, X, O. So what is that? One, two, three, four, five. It's, it's the maximum number is going to be five for X's and O's. So we need to make five of these. Five. There we go. Okay, now we need to make the X's. Which will be, let's do, we did red, blue, let's do yellow for X's. And then I'm thinking, we need the X's to fit in here as like a nice X. So I mean, I could do it like this. Okay, I, I did it back, but, but yeah, that's that's five of each, right? And I actually, I think I need to shrink these down because they're not going to fit in the in the holes. So we've got all our pieces and everything. Let's go ahead and start working on circuitry. For tic-tac-toe, right, how do you win? Well, you win by doing three in a row this way, this way, this way, this way, this way, this way, right? So what we're going to have to do is add in trigger zones to each one of those different ways we can win and then have it count up the amount of these things that are in it. So we'll have to do a trigger zone this way, 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 and this way, okay? And we're gonna have to double them because we have to have one trigger zone for the O's and one trigger zone for the X's. So I will go ahead and start working on that. There we go. So then we've got these three. Now we have to do the other three. And what I'm going to do is highlight all three of these and move them out of the way because we're going to have to basically keep them all in the exact same form or the exact same like like template shape. Otherwise, it gets a little bit hairy. Oops. <clears throat> yeah, so just make sure you have them all selected. And then we're going to move them all this way but we're keeping them aligned so that all we have to do is move them back into place once we hook them up because we will have to hook each one individually up to circuits so then what we're going to do is essentially the same deal we're going to add a a new trigger zone but we're going to go across instead of that way So then that would be the second set that we have. So let's select that one, that one, and that one. Okay, and then we're just gonna move them. We're gonna do the exact same thing. It's gonna move them kind of in the same spot, but there. <clears throat> okay, and then we've gotta do two more. We have to do the diagonals.
So now we have our first set of trigger zones done. All of these are going to be for either the X's or the O's. I'm going to go ahead and make them for the X's. But we want to copy all of these in the exact same formation and pull them that way. Because we're going to need the exact same thing, but we're going to need them for the O's as well. Okay, so they're all selected now. And we're going to clone all of them this way. So they're all still lined up. There we go. So now we have this for the X's and this for the O's. We have to configure them. Right now they're set up for player, they're, they're all still player trigger zones. I should have done this beforehand, I would have saved some work, but I just didn't think about it. So basically we're just gonna configure each and go to objects. And then while we're here, the tag for the X's, since this is gonna be the X set, uh, the tag for the X's is just gonna be X. So let's just modify the tag while we're here. We just type X. So we basically have to do this for each one because I didn't do it beforehand, which would have been a lot easier if I just did it at the beginning, but it is what it is, you know? I know that they're gonna eat me, if anybody's watching and they know what they're doing, they're gonna eat me up about the comments to be like, why did you do that? That was so slow. Look, <clears throat> I know, okay, I made mistakes. Mistakes were made, okay? <clears throat> we gotta do these, since this is the second pair and this is for the O's, we're gonna have to do it on, on here as well for the O's. So let's go ahead and repeat the process, but instead of the tag being X, it's gonna be O this time. So object, <clears throat> O. Last one here, object, and set it for the O. So now, also, again, I'm in the same situation when it comes over here to these. I need to tag all of these with either X or O. So since these are X's, obviously, we're gonna we're just gonna configure them and we're going to change their tag from maker pin object to, oops, to X. Okay, and then we just have to repeat the process basically with every single one. All right, so all of these <clears throat> have got X on there. And we do the same thing, but we tag all of the O's with O's. Same deal. O. Okay, so now that everything's labeled, I can show you. If I go here and I hit create, and then I go to gadgets, let's do other chips, and we're looking for an output chip. There we go, output. So if I do this, and I hook it up, since this set here is the X set, it will only detect X's. So if I hook this up to the green, it will tell me the current number of X's that are in the zone at, at that moment. So let me just move these. I'm gonna grab an X, and you can see when I put this in here, it's gonna switch to one as well as when I grab another one, if I put it in there, one, two. So it's going to count up the amount of these things. And I can also show you it detects X's, but it doesn't detect O's. So right now there's an X in there. It won't detect if an O's in there. Uh oh. All right. So that's basically how all of these, this one detects, is, detects the X and then this one detects the O's. So now what we have to do is basically set up a system where if any of these detect three X's, then we need it to say that X's win. And we're gonna do that with a sign. So let me just go ahead and get the sign out here. This is a bit backwards in the order, but we're just gonna do this. So let's put the sign up here. Boom. Okay, let's configure it. So message one, I want to say uh, just tic-tac-toe, right? Okay, message two, we want to show up if X wins, okay? This message is gonna say O wins. There we go. All right, and then there is a third message, I think, which, which we'll just do scratch, um, which is, I, I can't remember what you call it, but let's just say try again. So these are the different messages that we want displayed whenever it is. Right now, the only thing being input is a zero right here, so it's gonna just display tic-tac-toe. But what we need to do is hook all of these up to comparers, basically. So let's open up our palette again and go to gadgets and math chips. So what we're going to do is compare all of these things and check to see what number is coming out of them. So for instance, here we go. Let's just go ahead and hook this one up. The left side is going to be the green. Okay. And then the right side is going to be, oops, the right side is going to be three. 
So the way this works is that if there are, because this outputs the number of X's that are in here, basically when there is less than three in here, then this is zero and this is one. But if there are three in here, then it'll switch and this will be one and this will be zero. Let me show you real quick. All right, you see that this is zero and this is one. Watch, I'm gonna put this in here. Now this is one and this is zero. So that's basically how that works. <clears throat> so essentially what, what this means is that with every single one of these, we're gonna have to do that. We're just gonna have to hook up this exact same um, chip that we've got. There we go, okay, we have them both hooked up. So now that this is done, we need to use a Boolean chip in order to determine if one of these basically has been deemed to be true. In other words, if one of these is putting out a one instead of a zero right there. So we'll go into math chips here, use Boolean chip, and then we're gonna hook up all of these to this individually, the red pin, not the, not the green one. Um, however, because this only has seven, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Because it only has seven, and we have eight total here, I'm gonna take these two and add them together because then that way we can avoid using a, another chip here. Um, this really doesn't change much, it, it just makes it to where I don't have to add in another um, Boolean chip. So, hang on, let me just hook that up, hook that up. Okay, so we've got, this is going in here. So if any of these, we'll also have to switch this because we don't need it to be and, we need it to be or, right? So if this one triggers it, or if this one has a number, or if that one has a number, or if that one, if any of these, basically, only one has a number popping out, then we need this to trigger the red, the red pin. Otherwise, it's gonna be the same deal. If none of these have anything coming through it, then it'll, it'll spit out a zero at the red pin. Um, or if one of them has it, then it'll spit out a, a one, which we can then use to trigger something. All right, so that basically will determine, hey, what, do we have a winner in one of these spots? Um, if we do, then what do we want to happen? That's kind of where we are here. What do we want to happen if this is true? Um, and again, I can show you, if I take three of these things and put them in here, when one of these win, then it'll change this number to a one. So what I'm gonna do is stick all of these in here, and I'm gonna hook up this output chip. I'm gonna hook this up to here. So you can see right now, because none of these have a one coming out of them because there is not three in any of these different places. It's not gonna do anything. But when I, so this is hooked up to the output right here. Right now it's a zero. When I put these three into any of these different trigger zones, it will say it'll switch to a one because it's detecting three. So there we go, it's detecting three in this one. Yeah, let's turn it sideways. It's detecting three in that one. All right, it's detecting three in that one. So you can see that's kind of how it works. All right, so now we essentially have to copy all of this and just do it for these as well. So let's go ahead and do that. Because at this point then, once this is all copied, we then have to determine what it's gonna do once X wins or once O wins. All right, so now what I need to do is figure out what both of these are going to turn into, essentially, if they do equal one, or if there is three in their trigger zones, basically. So what we're gonna do is another comparer here, and we're going to say, if this number does equal one, then we're gonna have to put it in advanced mode. So let's configure the actual thing here in advanced mode because what this will do will let us control what comes out instead of it just being ones and zeros so if i hook this up and i say hey um actually hold on let me make sure what was the message on here because we want it to say x's win and o's win so this is the x's so x's were message one so we want this we want this pin here to be one if X's win, which I guess technically we don't have to do this, but I'm just gonna go ahead and do it just for example, because it would just be one anyway. But um, 
Let's just do that. So if this is true, if these, if this does equal this, then let's put out a one. What we're gonna have to do is the exact same thing. We're gonna have to clone this and hook it up here, except we need to change that output number to a two so that we can get the sign over there to say that X is, or that O is win rather. So let's configure that to two. Okay. So then now what we need to do is depending or, or regardless of what answer comes out of either of these, we need it to go into the sign here. So let's just do a addition chip. Let's see, a combinator chip, right? And this is just gonna combine this answer with this answer okay so it'll either it'll either because they can't both be triggered at the same time um it's either going to be a two or a one that's going to come out of here and then we're going to hook that up to the sign on the blue tab here so when i grab these three and put them into any of these trigger zones here that are set for the x's it should pop up here and say that x's win okay, so let's make sure we don't have anything selected Okay, boom, boom, boom. Move them all in here. See, X is win. There we go. All right, and then let's check. I mean, the O's should work too, but we'll just check just to make sure. All three should be in the trigger zone right here, so it should say O wins. Yep, there we go. All right, so now what we need to do is basically collapse all of these into our original board here. So what I'm going to do is select them all individually and move them. Um, that one, that one, that one. Let's move all of these. I'm like, I'm like wondering, do I have something else selected on accident? All right, there's those three. Okay, so now if I do X here, X there, and X there. There we go. All right, so I think about the only thing that we're missing now is a system to respawn all of these uh, when somebody does eventually win the game. So what we're gonna do here is we're going to basically do a whole bunch of the object spawners, object respawners. So that's what we're gonna do. And because you can't call them each like by themselves, you're gonna have to just make five on each side. So one, two, three, four, five. And then we're gonna have to add an additional tag because if I just labeled this one for O, it would only spawn one O and it'll kind of pick one from random but I need each one to be respawned when the game starts over. So again, this is something that probably could have been done more efficiently, but you know what? We're just gonna set it for, um, we're just gonna do X1, O1, let's do X on the side. So X1, all right, and then this one, we'll do um, X2. Okay, and then again, because we don't have to do that, we have to label each one of these as X1, X2, X3, X4. Now you can do multiple tags. So it's labeled as X, but we're just gonna do X1. Okay, is it this one? I've lost track of which ones I'm doing. So X2. All right, so we got that set up. Now we need to do the things with the O's, same deal. Just call it O1, O2, all that stuff. All right, so now they're all marked. Now we basically need uh, what condition needs to happen in order for all of these to basically trigger and get their their individual pieces back. What we're gonna have to do here is um, whenever this spits out a signal for the, the sign to go off, we're also gonna have it activate the red tabs on here because this responds it by tag. So we're also gonna hook the red up to basically every single one of these, which I believe we can do. Um, let me try this real quick, because I think we can do it like this. Four, five, one, two, three, four, five. And I think that we can go, frick, frick, <laughs> frick, damn. Uh, all right, well, that's okay. I think that we can 
Oh, no, there we go. It worked. So it wired every single one to that. So now when I put three of any of these in here, it's going to spawn every single one. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's put an X. Let's go ahead and let X's win. There we go. Put an X there. We will get that. Get, get, go away. We'll put an X here. Boop. And then we're going to put an X here. There we go. Oh, it didn't, it didn't leave up there for a little bit. So, because it happened so quickly, good lord, why are they all over the place? <laughs> there we go. That's not too bad. They're pretty, they're pretty right next to each other. So the only thing we have here is that I need there to be a delay on the tic-tac-toe, like the respawn and on everything. So we're going to take a delay chip and we're going to delay the... Um, the respawn basically of these things for let's just say like three seconds right we can just do like maybe three seconds can i configure this specifically on off wait hold on signal yeah so then what we need here is we need this signal to go in here but then we need to delay for like i think it would be 30 Right. Okay, and then we can just, and I think that's that. So then what the problem we have here is that I have to disconnect literally all of these and hook them up to this one. All right. Okay, so now that I've hooked that up, basically what this should do is I should be able to play the game and it'll say who won for like three seconds. And then after that, it should respawn. Oh, wins. Okay, and then tic-tac-toe. All right. All right, well, I think that's about it. Okay, now we just have to save all of this and put it in an invention. All right, so now that we've got done, I told you all I'd give you the invention so you can bring it in your own room. If you go into the invention store and you look up tic-tac-toe underscore rcl that will be the invention you feel free to add it to your rooms and make use of it however you would like and it should be fully editable as well if you did like this video because this is the first time i've tried this out make sure to leave a comment below and like it because i, I want to know if these i like doing these so i would love to be able to do more of these have a good day everybody rcl man out